Hello everyone, P441 here. So today we're going to be talking about the auto choke system on the Briggs & Stratton Quantum engines. So this is our victim. It's a 6.75 horsepower Briggs & Stratton Quantum. I've already removed the engine cover, the gas tank and the engine shroud and moved the dipstick out of the way just for the sake of time so you don't have to watch me remove all that stuff. So here you can see the auto choke system. We have a little thermal actuator here an air vane here and then that is linked to a uh, to the choke. Now we'll start over with the carburetor. Now most uh, Briggs & Stratton Quantum engines actually use a primer bulb for starting. In fact if you look at the front here on the air filter housing you can see there's just a block off plate where the primer bulb normally would be. But the auto choke system actually uses a proper choke. So if you come around here you look in there, you can see the choke plate, and now I'm opening it, open, open, closed, open, closed. So we'll come back around to this side now. So, this is an air-cooled engine, which means that these fins on the flywheel are going to create airflow, which is then directed by the uh, engine shroud over the rest of the engine to help keep it cool. Now when the engine is not running it's just going to be seeing just like this, choke is closed. Now when this engine starts and it comes up to speed and it's running at a normal speed, the airflow is going to push this wind vane forward like that. Now this has opened the choke. So once this air vane comes forward, the choke is now open and the engine can run normally. Now as the engine starts to heat up, this little thermal actuator, the arm on this thermal actuator is going to slowly move forward and once the engine is up to operating temperature it's going to be right about there. The purpose of this thermal actuator is for hot starts. Now when the engine is cold of course you want choke. So if you start the engine, run it just a little bit and then immediately shut it off, the engine is still cold so you're going to want choke. You want the choke to be engaged again so the wind vane is going to return and re-engage the choke for that cold start. But if you try to start a hot engine with the choke closed, it's going to flood the engine out. It's not going to want to start. So when the engine gets up to temperature, the arm on this strip moves forward and holds the wind vane forward, which therefore keeps the choke open. That way the choke is open during hot starts. Now when you shut the engine off, as it cools down, this strip will slowly return back to its cold position and it will allow the choke to close for cold starts again. Now this system is actually pretty reliable. There are a few things that can go wrong with it. Um, one of the common ones is that this pivot will seize up or the choke shaft itself will seize up. I've also frequently seen a uh, gunk get stuck on the choke plate. This stuff all has to move nice and freely. You notice I'm using very little effort and it springs back easily. Remember, this is actuated by air, so it has to be able to move very freely. The other issue you can run into is that the bimetallic strip uh, inside this thermal actuator goes bad, in which case this arm will not move. Now if this happens, the symptoms you're going to see is that the engine will start fine when it's cold, but if you shut it off when it's hot and then try to restart it, it'll either chug and be very hard to start or it just simply won't start at all. The other issue I see sometimes is actually caused by human error, and that is that someone will take it apart and they'll put it back together wrong. Most often what they do is this either they put this little loop through the hole or this ends up being put in front of this uh, loop on the wind vane and the end result of that is that the choke is held uh, closed full time so basically your engine will start and it'll run really rough and sputter and pop um, because the choke is on and then probably eventually die if it manages to get up to speed and doesn't just die completely other than that, uh, oh, there is one other thing, and that is this spring. Um, there's the spring. That's how it's connected. And you need to make sure you use the proper spring on this. You don't want to just throw any old spring on it because, as I mentioned before, 
the air does need to be able to blow this vein forward and if it can't then your choke is going to be stuck on. Um, so I have seen these uh, springs break or they come off the end there and then uh, this can just rattle around and it'll, sometimes the choke will be closed, sometimes it'll be open, you know, it just kind of does whatever it wants to. But that's about it. That's really all there is to it. You know, a lot of people might complain and say that these systems are unreliable. Personally, I have one on my own mower and I've had that mower for a long time. It's always worked great, never really had an issue. I see more problems with fuel on these engines than I do with the auto choke. So hopefully this helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below.